for me specifically, it was immediately the greatest trip I've ever done. I, 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 I loved Amsterdam when I went, went to Amsterdam. I think it became like my favorite European city in general. Okay. I've been all around Europe. I grew up in Turkey and, um, you know, I love, I love Paris. I love London. I love Amsterdam. Loved Amsterdam. It's so wonderful. Spain is, is incredible. Barcelona is incredible. You know, I've been to Switzerland. Zurich is, is insane. Austria is insane. Uh, Berlin is all right. Kind of fun. All these places I've been to that I, I just, I genuinely love. Okay. Uh, significantly better than America. Let's be real. Every single city that I just mentioned is like 10 X. Okay. It's just, they got public transit, great city planning. It was, it was great. Um, better than America. Yes, dude. What do you mean? America's dog. Sh Let's be fucking real. You know this already. Y y what do you mean? The 95% of my commentary revolves around how fucking dog America is. And you guys are like shocked when I talk about other places and how much nicer they are. Guys, it's awful. So many of the things that like make these cities wonderful, beautiful places that are so livable for me at least, just do not exist. Just straight up fucking do not exist in the United motherfucking States of America, okay? Walkable cities, public transit, at least a, a, a level of social safety nets that probably eradicate a big chunk of crime and poverty, okay? That play a significant role in like the reduction of crime in general, okay? These are all clean cities in general. Like these are all a byproduct of city governments, local governments, municipalities, and all the way up to the federal level. Governments being a little bit more competent than the United States of America, which our government literally is just, you know, four companies and a fucking trench coat. So that's just how it is. And you know, you know it. For a lot of these people, when they come to America, they only experience it in like a super short period of time and they see like consumption overdrive, capitalism. I was one of those people when I was growing up in Turkey and I came to America, I was like, oh my God, it's so much better. It's so much better. It's so much better. I love America. I love America. I love America. Now that I live in America, I know that's not the case. You go to any city you go to in the United States of America, you go to all the cities. It's the same. Massive highways. Uh, urban sprawl looks identical nearly. Okay. It's just, it's just the same. But you get like 30 different brands of Oreos, which is pretty good. Okay. That's pretty good. Did you get recognized? Because that can play a role too. Um, I got recognized a little bit, not a lot, which actually was great. That, that does, yeah, that does give you a sense of comfort and security as well, uh, a little bit for sure. But you wouldn't have these opportunities in any other country? Yes and no. Anyway, I was a huge Marabou. I still am a huge Marabou. I believe that like there's so much we can do in America that could make this the best country on the fucking planet. But like, we don't have that. We're not making any moves towards that. I'll tell you this much. When we got into Japan, it's like latest it's like 3 a.m. Japan time, okay? Everything was like so streamlined. Boom, boom, boom. Get in and out, you know? Do the fucking face thing. Do the uh, automated application. You walk into Japan. You got your bags immediately. Came back to America. Took us two fucking hours to get the bags. Why? Because they just didn't take the bags out. They didn't take half the fucking bags out of the plane. There was someone with an air tag in her bag. And she was literally like, I'm looking at it right now. The air tag shows that my bag is still inside the plane. Two hours it took. Nobody wants to work anymore. It's not even that. Like, it's not. I'm not one of those motherfuckers. I'm not like, oh, nobody wants to work anymore. But it just sucks. Lamau, you're not grinding hard enough to get the bag. It's such a dog-eat-dog, -dog, hyper-capitalist, and hyper-individualist culture in the United States of America where everyone is like, fuck you, I'm gonna get mine. Fuck yourself. You're a piece of shit. That's just kind of how it is. And also, it is infinitely mismanaged, okay? Famously so. So for that reason, I think that's part of the reason why it's just like dog We're constantly cutting corners. We're constantly fucking uh, trying to maximize efficiency. I'm going to tell you right now, it's not like in Japan there is, you know, people who are like very good at their job, even though that is a cultural thing and I will talk about that. But there's probably enough fucking employees working at the, at the, you know, baggage assembly line then in comparison to America, where like they probably are cutting 11% of the workforce because that's going to yield tremendous returns on investment for the shareholders. So then you got three fucking kids doing the job that 10 kids are supposed to be doing. So the three kids who are also being mismanaged by the other kid who's like, yeah, I don't fucking know, dog. Go work on the other one. Go, go leave Delta Airlines. Go work for the Japan Airlines uh, one now. They just leave the goddamn fucking bags there. That's just how it works. I'll tell you this much, even to get people to like, you know, sign off on the COVID quarantine requirements and restrictions, they had like 25 people waiting off of one flight. There was like 
literally for every step that I took, there was one Japanese person who like spoke a little bit of English telling me like, please make sure you download the application. Like they have so many people working on the same job. There is, it, it almost like loses a sense of profitability. And that honestly is how it's supposed to be, which is part of the reason why I think they even don't um, turn around and like up, upgrade and improve their systems. I would say it's not necessarily just Japanese efficiency. It's relatively it's actually the opposite it is that they are not efficient they're inefficient in a way and and what i mean by that is uh, they have multiple people doing the same fucking job so people are checking one another and there's enough there's enough of a, a a division of labor that isn't like you know forcing people to take on 11 different parts of the job it's yeah thoroughness over efficiency exactly what in america we consider that to be a redundancy okay and we try to eliminate that because we're constantly profit seeking and you don't see that it is measured twice cut once exactly i think that is a good thing i'm a i'm a big advocate for this uh, we already have like make work jobs all around the United States of America, but it's usually in the white collar fields. Okay. It's usually in like mid-level management fields in Japan. I, it, I feel like they have both make work jobs for every rung of society. And most importantly, when you have multiple people doing the menial labor tasks that you are normally supposed, you can normally, you know, get more out of in an Amazon labor uh, facility, for example, in an Amazon distribution facility. When you have multiple people doing that job, you yield better results. It's not efficient in the sense that like, you know, you're not going to get the most profits out of it, but you have more people that you employ, more mouths are fed as a consequence of that. And the work doesn't get fucking held up for no goddamn reason. That's it. It's not an accident i went on the shinkansen and it's basically a land plane okay and this just worked okay it just fucking worked it was insane it, it was so speedy like you just go in you get in you have 30 seconds to get in or out if it's like one of those other stations that it stops at right but it literally is running on time it's a bullet train that is just like actually running on time imagine being able to get on a train that hits top speeds that are similar to a plane, okay? It's only like 100 miles uh, slower than a fucking plane, which is insane, unimaginable. Think about that, okay? And the train is running on fucking time. You just get in, you know exactly it's on the dot. It's going to be there on time, no matter what you fucking do, okay? It's it's $130 for an e economy ticket, which is like kind of expensive. And it's $150 for the green ticket, which is like supposed to be their business class, right? No, you got something wrong. It's not that fast. It's, it also helps if someone needs to leave from work. It's not the end of the world. Yeah. How much, how fast is the Shinkansen? Yeah, it's, oh, oh, I fucked it up. It's 300 kilometers. Sorry. It's 186 miles. So it's 200 miles. It's half as fast. I, I fucked up. It was the metric system. It's so it's 300 kilometers per hour. So it's 186, like around 200 miles. And the E5 bullet trains of Japan Railways East run at 200 miles per hour on the Tohoku Shinkansen, which runs from North Tokyo to Shin Aomori. And that is, uh, you know, around 200, 300 miles uh, uh, slower than a plane. But, like, remember, it's on land, okay? That's incredibly fast. So what I'm trying to explain to you is, imagine a world where you can, you don't have the TSA and you don't have the delays. You have the option of basically being able to get in to a train that is going to pretty much go, not as fast as a fucking uh, plane will, but, you know, close enough. That's unimaginable dude it's like a five minute process to get to the fucking train and then you're on the train for two hours stop it we all know that you got special treatment because you were the biggest leftist since lenin himself and the communist government in japan wanted to impress you be for real yeah japan communist totally